What's up, YouTube? So I kind of want to come through for a moment and talk about the struggles of you know, light skin, mixed, and biracial uh, black identified women. And this sort of came about kind of just because um, I know this is a bit of a, a bit like, oh, this is a little interesting. Uh, but yeah, this came about because um, someone um, assumably a light-skinned female said, you know, like, basically light-skinned females got issues too, right? And that I should be, you know, speaking on those issues, you know, versus, you know, speaking on, like, the brown-skinned, dark-skinned females issues. In fact, I'll read her comment to you, all right? Um, she posted the following comment. Stephen Brown, colorism is real. However, you stated that you push for dark skin and brown skin women. You do realize that light skinned black women experience colorism just as much, but in a different way. Specifically from the black community, right? Is there a reason why you don't push for light-skinned black women that experience colorism that have a skin tone such as yourself. And she left this comment on a video titled Why I Talk About Colorism, where I kind of just explain like the reasons why I kind of tend to address colorism issues. And, you know, she kind of, you know, in a way, has some validity in it. Um, I that comment that she posted received a thumb up, one thumbs up. All right, I repo I replied to her comment, and this was my reply. I agree that colorism is real. It affects the entire community. I do care about light skin slash mixed women's issues with colorism, as well as brown skin, dark skin, women and men's issues. However, I really don't hear about colorism issues from light skin and mixed women. Also, dark skin and brown skin men often cape for you and place you above their own female counterpart, which further perpetuates colorism issues. I push for brown and dark skin women because I think they need it the most and I think they appreciate it the most. That received eight thumbs up. Not trying to be petty, I'm just saying. And then she replied, okay, well, it's very real on our end too. Check out uh, Light Skin Tears channel. Maybe her channel will open your eyes to what us light skinned black women experience as well. Peace and love. Um, and as well, I actually do, um, you know, periodically uh, check out uh, Light Skin Tears channel. As well, um, the lady who runs it, you know, the female who runs it, um, of course, she's a light skinned female, um, also on occasion comments on my videos. Um, you know, so that with all that being said, I was like, well, you know, let me kind of do a little bit of exploration about, you know, the issues that light-skinned black women and mixed and biracial women specifically go through within colorism, right? Kind of do a little research, you know, watching a little YouTube videos here and there about, you know, you know, light-skinned mixed biracial women talking about their colorism experiences within the black community, right? And, you know, um, in this video, I want I want to explore some of those issues, you know, and just talk about them, you know, a little bit. And before I get into this video, I mean, I'm already into this video, but before I get into these topics, I will say, disclaimer, this does not apply to all light-skinned black women, or light-skinned, or biracial women, or mixed women, or whatever. It does not apply to all. Um, if it don't apply, let it fly. A hit dog will holler. Take with a grain of salt. All right.
So we got that disclaimer out the way. Now let's get into this, all right? I tend to see that, you know, light-skinned people's issues in general, but, you know, light-skinned women's issues, I'll try to be specific, but I'll also kind of, you know, um, do a little compare and contrast with other folks' issues as well, though. But light-skinned women's issues, as well as just light-skinned folks' issues in general, tend to revolve around identity issues, right? Usually it's not being seen or recognized as black or, like, black enough. That seems to be the underlying tone of it all. That seems where it tends to ultimately circle around and circle back to, usually. You know, and also, you know, being othered from blackness too. Like, again, you know, identity issues, right? Like, you know, you're not black enough. You don't belong here. You know, get out of here, white girl, <laughs> right? I think we all seen that whole like light skin no um light girls documentary that was supposed to be like the answer or like a rebuttal to the dark girls documentary right and by the way like that light that light girls documentary I think it was like low key poorly done just as far as like like continuity and like flow is concerned but also um like some of the women didn't really seem like they were real, like really like light skinned, honestly. You know, I think maybe they got maybe like a light skin pass. You know, like Tatiana Ali, right? I kind of see her more as like a brown skin, but because she has you know loosely textured hair, maybe she gets like you know the light skin pass, right? Um, and then even in that in those clips, it was like. I saw like a outtake clip of like Raven Simone talking about she used to tan when she was on the um, That's So Raven show. And then someone said, stop tanning because we have to relight the scene because of you wanting to be dark. <laughs> Something like that. She ain't, they, she ain't put it like that. But, but even when she was saying that, she was laughing too. She was like, <laughs> and she, you know, it's like, is this really a struggle? <laughs> like, let's be real. Like, is that really a struggle? I wanted to tan because I wanted to be pretty. I, uh, and that's another thing with these light-skinned chicks sometimes. They love saying, I wish I was dark. You notice that usually when a light-skinned person is saying they wish they were dark, it's usually a light-skinned woman. You know? Do you really hear light-skinned mixed and biracial men saying, I wish I was dark? That's another thing that I think goes over people's heads. That uh, low key, some light skinned mixed and biracial women tend to have a self hate issue or something like that. And then the other aspect of it is some of them tend to have a superiority issue, too. It's like two extreme, like two extremes. Either they're superiority or they're suffering from some sort of a self esteem issue themselves or self hate issue or something. I don't know what the hell happened to light skin mixed and biracial women. I don't know what this colorist system did to them. Ooh -wee. You know, and not to toot my home or not to toot the horn of light skin mixed and biracial men, but I gotta, I gotta, you know, give us a shout out. I really do, you know, I got to. I really feel like we are like low key, probably the most well adjusted members members in this community, as quiet as is kept. But of course, you know, we ain't gonna never get that recognition. <laughs> we ain't gonna never get that recognition. So that's why I gotta do it in this video. All right. And I've done it a few times before, right? You know, I think that we are probably the strongest members in this community as far as like being able to be the lightning rod for criticism, you know, getting it from like, you know, the dark skinned dudes. Hey, um, the dark skinned women sometimes want to come with it, right? And even your own female counterpart who's should put, you know, supposed to have your back come with it too, right? Who else could handle all that? You know, and still, you know, be able to. Hold your head up high and not be a victim. And honestly, not even have any ill will for the most part towards any member of the community. No.
like I said, our resilience isn't recognized because it's not convenient to recognize our resilience because then they would have to recognize their fragility, right? So again, you know, that's why I got to do what I got to do here, all right? But back to topic, though. Um, so yeah, um, those are some issues that light-skinned women go through. As well, um, sometimes light-skinned women struggle to kind of like be accepted by, um, like particularly like brown-skinned and dark-skinned women. You know, they kind of want to be, you know, cool with them sometimes, <laughs> you know, and be friends with them and stuff like that. And, you know, sometimes some dark skinned women kind of ain't feeling them sometimes, you know, and they're like, oh, you must be stuck up. You must have an attitude. You know, you light skin. Of course, you you, know, you must think you better than me, which that to be fair, that's not always true. You know, sometimes it is, but that's not always true for every single light-skinned female or every single light-skinned person, honestly. You know, it kind of depends on the upbringing, you know, of the light-skinned person. Um, also, another issue that comes up, um, being fetishized by colorists, you know, brown-skinned and dark-skinned black men. Although, some of them like it. Not all of them. But, you know, um, that's an issue for s some light-skinned mixed and biracial women where they're feeling like, kind of like they're being seen in it, like, just purely for their, you know, their light skin or their loosely textured hair or um, exotic eye color. And that's it. You know, it's not, you know, no interest in the mess of like a human being, right? And, you know, that is something to take note of and to pick up on because, you know, fetishes, right, are dehumanizing, right? You know, just like historically, um, black people in general have been fetishized, um, especially by white people. But notice that, you know, they didn't really recognize our humanity within all that fetishization, right? That, you know, K Beast was raping black women, but he, you know, laying down with black women and stuff like that. But he made sure to keep that white supremacist system going strong, full force. Because at the end of the day, it was just a fetish, you know. Um, as, and as well, um, sometimes some brown skin and dark skinned men. Uh, use light skin mixed and biracial women as like a quote unquote stepping stone into the White House. You know, <laughs> as some women have put it, like they don't, like they know what they own and they're not trying to be like their stepping stone to the White House, so to speak, right? Um, and I think that sometimes turns, you know, them off and sort of, you know, doesn't sit well with them because they just feel like at one point or another they just gonna end up being tossed aside for the next chick that's lighter brighter and whiter <laughs> and i'll say that they are smart enough to pick up on that a kudos to them because that does happen but some women just be get, getting caught up in that fetishization and being uplifted and put on a um dusty dirty pedestal you know, um, so you know, it's uh, something to, something to think about. Um, other issues um, dealing with the stereo stereotypes of being you know stuck up, conceited, vain, pretentious, not black enough. You know, and I'll say that those are negative stereotypes, and those do kind of factor into how people interact with you. You know, that is true. Um, however, I will sort of compare this to like brown skin and dark skin women's struggles, you know, colorism struggles, their stereotypes, right? Where they're stereotyped as being like angry, mean, bitter, jealous, aggressive, masculine, right? Ugly, right? No. Notice that no one ever attacks a light-skinned biracial or mixed woman's looks, usually. Notice that. 
you know, versus the brown skin, dark skin, black females, her looks get attacked a lot more often, right? No one ever attacks the light skinned chick and say, hey, you know, look at that piss colored bitch over there, right? Look at that stringy hair hoe over there. You know, why are your eyes such a weird color? You know, what the, what the fuck is up with that? Why the fuck your eyes are green? Bluish green or some shit. Like, where the fuck is the rest of your melanin? It looked like you only got, like, half your melanin. Like, did you forget the other... Like, what the fuck? Like, go find the rest of your melanin, bitch. <laughs> like, why does your skin turn red? What's up with that? Like, what, what sort of shit is that? Like, see, that's that white devil in you right there. That's that white devil in you. Right? You notice, like, no one really goes at the light skin mixed and biracial women like that. You know, you, you, have you ever heard anybody go in on light skin mixed and biracial women like that? Even now, it's kind of like a, a bit of a surprise. Like, wow, oh, I didn't even really think of that. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> but when it comes to the brown skin, dark skin females, we know how folks attack them and their um, phenotype and their looks, right? Go for the hair, the facial features, right? The skin tone, right? No. And if you ain't got that, you know, signature, you know, voluptuous brick house black woman body, they'll go for that too, you know, because you suppose they supp the brown skin chicks are supposed to have it, right? Honestly, people feel like. As quiet as it's kept, like that's their saving grace. The body, right? The sex appeal. You know? I know folks don't want to admit it, but that's how folks be acting. Um, also, um, you know, light skinned mixed and biracial women often can't live up to the promoted ideal of them that's in the media, right? You know that, you know, the Beyonce's are the uh, Alicia Keys are the Rihanna's or the Zendaya's, right? You know, the more exceptional ones, right? They can't really live up to that. Some of them, like some can't, right? And that fucks with them too, because it's like they light skin, but they ain't really got what you expect, <laughs> you know, what you, what is stereotyped. Right. <clears throat> I feel like, you know, <clears throat> very low key, you know, I feel like some light skinned dudes may kind of low key kind of go through that themselves. Really not nearly as bad, but at least the light skinned dudes tend to just gravitate towards the light skinned woman to perfect his light skinnedness. Right. Versus this, uh, these light skinned mixed and biracial women. I don't know what be up with them. Maybe on some a whole nother uh, planet or something. I don't know. This some type of a mental issue that goes on that tends to really affect some light skin mixed and biracial women for some reason. Because you know they would gravitate towards anyone but their counterpart. <laughs> Oof! I tell you. The Lord does not like a wicked woman. A message, that's a message for you, light skin, mixed and biracial women, okay? <clears throat> Another issue. They can't compete in a white world. Notice that. Like, biracial women know they can't really compete with white women. Mm -mm. They know that. You, the, unless they're, like, really exceptional, right? The typical ones can't, so they know they come into black spaces, right, where the game is rigged in their favor, right? Um, but I think that them not being able to kind of fit into a white world sometimes is an issue for them, too, especially if they've been raised in, like, a white setting or a white environment. That tends to be an issue as well. Um, <clears throat> and all this tends to lead up to... Um, Light-skinned women ending up 
weak-minded, which leads to them being manipulated. You know, very open to manipulation, um, particularly by you know the brown-skinned, dark-skinned men. You know, you know, and as well from there, this all ultimately leads up to the tragic mulatto stereotype, right? And notice the tragic mulatto stereotype. When it was portrayed in the media, it was usually portrayed as a biracial or mixed um, part black woman having some sort of an identity issue that kind of just leads to some big major problem, right? Notice it's usually it was the women that um, got the spotlight in that, right? It usually wasn't so much the men, right? I could think of like one movie where it kind of revolved around a man. And that was the human stain, right? Where the guy was part black, but he didn't look it. And, you know, him trying to sort of navigate and um, pass for white. Um, but yeah, usually these tragic mulatto stories usually revolve around women, not men, right? You know, so I do say all of that to say that, you know, light-skinned, mixed, and biracial women do have issues. They do, you know. But sometimes I tend to, it tends to be like, this. these issues don't really come up until, like, brown-skinned and dark-skinned women speak on their issues. Because if these were issues, it's like, with us and racism, we aren't usually cued to talk about racism because... Racism affects us just so much. We just have to talk about it. We have to speak on it, right? But you notice when white people want to have a rebuttal, then they're like, oh, look at the talk about what they go through. But you notice they don't really talk about what they go through until we start the conversation, right? Then it's like a use it, it's kind of like as a rebuttal and just almost like a silencing tactic. Like, you know, we all struggle, right? And let's not pretend like colorism is just, you know, you know, well, let's not pretend that colorism is fair and balanced, right? Like everyone has the same exact struggle and issue, right? And that it's equivalent to one another. Let's not pretend like that because it's not, you know? That's why when I'm on here, I cannot be fair and balanced, because colorism is not fair and balanced. So I can't be fair and balanced when addressing an issue that's not fair and balanced. That doesn't really, like, I have to be specific. I have to be unfair and unbalanced in order to really address and rectify the issue. Now, as well, addressing racism. Let's be honest. Racism does affect everyone in this system you know all groups of people in this system you know when it comes to black and white people it does affect um both of them just in different ways like it affects us uh, like much more though like white people it kind of gives them a superiority superiority complex right and also has them looking down on the down on us like looking at us like we're less than right and, you know, perhaps receiving some sort of being called, like, a, a racial slur, you know. But compare that to, like, what black folks have gone through within racism, right? It's like, no, let's not pretend like these are just equivalents. That's the name. Like, let's not pretend like these are equivalencies and that this is all fair and balanced. And let's just address this, you know, being fair and balanced. We can't. We can't do that. We got to be real. We got to be honest. We got to be candid about this. It's not fair and balanced. Uh, but I'm going to bring this video to a close. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, please leave your comments in the comment section and let me know what you think about this. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.